Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the Drexel University presentation for the Solar Cup Challenge. My name is Gail Zanaria. I'm the project manager for the Drexel team. Our team consists of five students, including myself, our advisor, Peter Cleland. John Scully is our conceptual design lead. Brennan Hill is our development planner. Janelle Iqbala. Iqbala is our financial advisor. And An Moon is our distribution impact lead. The district use case of Florida Agricultural Mechanical University presented some interesting unique challenges to our team. I want to give a little background on uh, FAMU, some constraints that we needed to uh, account for. There are five buildings um, that required uh, backup power in case of uh, power outages. Um, and our student body size for 2023 20, uh, was uh, 9,000 uh, 9, total. Um, along with that, um, our team and our proposal wanted to make sure that green space was uh, taken into account, uh, utmost being from Drexel um, as being a city school, we really value uh, green space. So we made sure that our proposal um, really took that into account. Another important factor for uh, our team was making sure that uh, the uh, proposal that we gave forth also uh, aligns with uh, FMU's master plan. Um, all the buildings that you see here in yellow and uh, light orange um, and dark orange are slated for uh, either demolition or some sort of remodel in the future. We want to make sure to account for that um, with any solar installations that we uh, proposed. Some of, our, some of our biggest concerns with our site um, were obviously hurricane season. Um, Florida is obviously battered every year with hurricanes. And as a result, uh, we want to make sure that Everything could withstand 120 mile hour winds up to three seconds as per uh, the local and state ordinance. Um, the North Campus is also provided with uh, 500,000 kilowatt hours monthly from the city of Tallahassee's solar rider program. And we had to make sure that um, our, we accounted for that and actually tried to offset but not replace um, that solar program. Another concern was uh, soil analysis. It being Florida, um, we were worried of uh, a high water table. So anything that we uh, structurally put into the ground, we want to make sure um, would be accounted for and would um, not uh, fall over if uh, if uh, hurricanes came through. And then uh, last but not least, land and use and uh, zoning laws, um, very important for uh, this location as uh, Florida is somewhat, um, it's somewhat needed uh, solar and uh, need solar uh, zoning and things like that. We wanna make sure that we follow along with that. Uh, finally, our panel selection uh, came down to three types, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, or thin film. Um, our team decided thin film was far too flimsy, especially given the wind constraints. And we wanna make sure we had a resilient and a robust panel. So ultimately we decided to go with a monocrystalline panel from Panasonic. Um, it has a low temperature coefficient with a 22.2% efficiency. Um, this panel was selected by our team, as it also has a low degradation of a quarter of a percent per year, giving it a 92% efficiency um, degradation-wise uh, 25 years out. I will uh, now hand over to John Skelly. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is John Skelly. I was the lead for the uh, layout design. And uh, for our installation plan, we chose to install rays on both rooftops and parking lot structures. Um, we considered these as well as floating solar, um, water bodies, and in fields, and we opted to go with uh, roof parking uh, for a number of reasons. Um, as for the roof PV systems, we felt they would be very suitable for FAMU's campus, as campus has a near, nearly perfect azimuth to the sun, um, and the majority of the buildings have a near perfect east, west, north, and south side. Um, and this allowed us to not only target the south facing roofs, but also maximize the number of panels uh, fitting on flat roofs. Um, and Aurora really allowed us to target uh, these areas by seeing the highest irradiance. Um, as far as uh, parking uh, structures went, um, they result in the least interference with uh, space on campus. Um, as Galen mentioned, uh, we took great consideration into not uh, messing with the green spaces there um, because yeah, we know that here and uh, we've had a couple places like that um, built over in the past year and I think it, uh, definitely hurts the campus feel a little bit. Um, and additionally, uh, we opted for these uh, roof, or sorry, uh, parking lot structures to be canopies over the, um, over the parking spaces and they 
also will keep uh, cool, uh, cars cool underneath. Um, and in comparison to the green spaces, we won't have to worry about trenching and anything else uh, putting the uh, wiring underground. Um, FAMU Village uh, was a primary target for us to design a raise, uh, like I said, a lot of roof space, um, as well as a lot of space in that parking lot. Um, and uh, I think it adds to the uh, aesthetic as well, not just the energy offset. And the parking lot structure, like I said, uh, can fit a lot of panels and it has the canopy over it. Um, and these panels were all angled and optimized angle of nine degrees. Um, Lee Hall offers two south facing roof faces at different angles, which uh, ultimately offer a strong orientation to the sun. Um, as for Howard Hall, the chilled water plant, boiler plant, and the respecting park parking structure, uh, they all provided the benefits of that flat roof where we were able to hit that optimized angle. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, originally we had it at uh, about 30 degrees, but as Gayla mentioned, we had to bring that down a little bit to account for the winds. Um, and similar to the FAMU village lot, uh, it'll provide, the parking structure will provide the same benefits and not interfere with the green spaces. And uh, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Janelle now, thanks. So the university requires its five main buildings to have a minimum of 25% peak shaving for its highest load during the year. Our proposed solar panels are sized to perform this task even after 25 years of degradation. These buildings were also reviewed for battery system and proposed sizing will provide two hours of backup battery uh, at the end of 25 year life. Typical battery degrades upon number of cycles it's performed. To minimize this, we designed through system advisor model for manual dispatch, programming charging during the day uh, before the peak hours up to 95% full and discharging after sunset down to 85%, which is the minimum for the two hour ride through for the peak loads. With this design, the average state of charge is 90.2%, which will provide an estimated output of 12.6 megawatt hours after 25 years, which is less than the 70% uh, capacity warranty for the battery. Uh, we assume that it's a linear extrapolation and they should give greater than 85% capacity at end of life, which is what we designed for. The cost per watt comes out to $1.72, which includes the panel, inverter, permits, and inspections, and hardwares. Uh, all metals used in this project will come from a local company called CMC Steel Florida, uh, which is which lowers the carbon emission due to a shorter transportation being local. This is also an American company, uh, which gives us an extra 10% uh, investment tax credits. Uh, we then added the developer margin construction loan and the total for the solar installation before the ITC is $6.4 million. And if we add the battery, it comes to 10.4 million. Uh, both the solar panel and the battery uh, in this case, gets 40% investment tax credits, uh, which makes this project realizable. Again, we recommend just the solar panels, which gives about 8.5 years break even time. Uh, with the profit coming in, this can give the university some budget for new buildings, such as agrivoltaic system for the community garden in the South Campus. And I will hand it over to Nam Nguyen. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nam, and uh, I'm gonna discuss about the distribution system impact. Um, uh, installing a solar plus storage system uh, can cause both positive and negative impact, and uh, the the positive impact including climate change, um, increased uh, stability of the grid, and uh, discrete electricity bills. Uh, in terms of negative impact, a PV system can cause a uh, voltage and thermal constraint, um, uh, impact uh, power quality, and cause reverse power flow. Uh, at the side of the PV system incre increase, the impact on the distribution network also increased, and uh, we are carefully choosing the side for its building uh, within the power demand from load, uh, from load to mitigate the impact. Uh, we are not installing any new transformer because we already have the transformer uh, capacity rate uh, above the uh, uh, system size. Uh, and uh, as we can see, uh, 
we also have the hosting capacity uh, uh, map. Uh, so in uh, this slide, and uh, we make sure that um, it the system side will um, under the uh, maximum hosting capacity uh, by applying the uh, triangle formula and assuming the power factor to be uh, 0.95 and we can calculate the appearance power for each system and it will be under the uh, total maximum capacity um, for each uh, interconnection location and uh, from here uh, we can conclude that uh, our proposed uh, PV system do not violate a hosting capacity constraint um, on the distribution system. Uh, Brandon will uh, take over the uh, development plan. Hi, my name is Brendan. As Nam mentioned, uh, I will be going over our construction plan. Uh, the section of campus where all of our work is going to be contained is zoned as a university transition uh, area. This, the regulations for this area allow for building solar systems as part of existing buildings with the purpose of servicing that set utility, meaning as long as we're not building a solar farm with the intentions of sending 25% or more of the produced power back to the grid, we are within the zoning regulations set forth by a university transition zoning in Leon County, Florida. To adhere to codes and the local state attendance entities, the design needs to be approved by a mechanical engineer and all electrical plans need to be signed off by an electrical engineer licensed in the state of Florida. All structures, both ground mounted and roof mounted need to be uh, approved that they can withstand a three second gust of 120 mile an hour wind uh, to ensure that they will not be damaged during hurricane season. This is Leon County code that ensures the uh, panels are secure. The carport structure will be a steel beam with a flat roof pitched away from the FAMU village building in con consisting of a gutter and drain system and reinforced beam steel uh, beam footings to ensure structural stability in high winds. The system that will be uh, mounted at the FAMU village and in compliance with the solar ordinance shall not exceed four feet above the roof height at any given point. This uh, project is not below the 1000 square foot exemption of the solar ordinance. Therefore, permitting will be required for this building before work can proceed. The parking lot structures will be set back from Perry Street, a minimum of 75 feet to ensure local fire and paramedic rescue can access FMA, FAMU village in case of emergency and in, ca in case their vehicle, specifically fire engines, could not fit under the carport. The carport will have a clearance of 13 feet to ensure most vehicles can pass under with ease. A building permit will be required to be submitted to Leon County for all individual structures. A part of the permitting process requires submission to inspection by local governing bodies. International Building Code references UT code on acceptable materials that are used in photovoltaic systems. All of the panels that a team plans on using adhere to this code. The building will be done in three phases over six months. Phase one is going to consist of permitting, surveying, and acquisition of materials. Phase two is going to be all of the moving earth pouring footers and in installation of the racks and electrical wiring and conduit, conduit. Phase three is going to be the installations of the panels themselves and testing. Lastly, there will be interconnection to the grid. There will be some overlap in phases because our site is large enough to where multiple steps can be going on at the same time. Uh, this concludes Drexel University's presentation, and we would like to open the floor up for uh, any questions.